He went for me. He went for me. He went for me. Oh, all the way to Calvary. He went for me. He died to set me free. Although I had so many, many sins, Jesus took them all away and he pardoned me. Clap it. Yes, sir. Sing it again now. Oh, all the way, all the way to Calvary. He went for me. He went for me. He went for me. All the way to Calvary. He went for me. He died to set me free. took them all away and he pardoned me although I had so many many sins Jesus took them all away and he pardoned me this is the day this is the day that the Lord has made that the Lord has made I will I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad. Come on, put your hands together. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord had. How about Jesus is the way? Jesus is the way, Jesus is the way that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, Jesus is the way. Hallelujah. Is that true? He's the one and only way. Amen. Y'all can have your seats. Amen. God bless you. We're going to have a couple specials. Brother Aaron, do you, you have yours ready?
Sister Sarah, hang on.
Then suddenly without warning Storm surrounded my life But even in the storm I can feel the calm And here's the reason why Simply saying, peace be still. He controls the strongest wind. Oh, and that's why.
from the Father above. Recover my spirit forever, I pray in fact. Hallelujah. The peace speaker is here, saints. If there's something in your life, there's some storm in your life, and you need the peace speaker, I mean, actually, if you have, if you have faith for it, you can be a peace speaker. Is that right, Brother Brian? So speak to that storm in Jesus' name. Speak to it yourself. Amen. Let's all stand and invite Brother Matt to come and bring us the word. How many enjoyed the service on Sunday, the ministering of the word? Amen. I know that there was a lot of pulling going on, so let's do the same thing tonight. Get behind the word and amen. Let the Lord know he's welcome tonight. <clears throat> the splendor of a king. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God? Sing with me. Yeah. 
we're in right I don't, I don't know where I want to go let's just go to key of F amen there is none like you no one else can touch my heart like you do could search for all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. Sing it again now. There is none like you, my Lord. No one else can touch my heart like you do and I could search for all eternity Lord and find there is none like you there is none like I happy, so happy to be here in the house of the Lord. Thank you for all that good music and singing. Worship, we had a little struggle there uh, in the back that was unseen with the sound. He wasn't getting anything online, so I had to spend a little bit of time. Sorry, Brother Ken, if you called me. I'm not sure if you did or not. I was uh, just uh, rushing to get out here. 
But uh, I know that the devil didn't win, and he's not a winner. He's a loser. He loses every time. Amen. He tries to attack the family of God. So we got the victory. Amen. We can hear and hear, and they can hear online. So praise the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Daniel chapter 3, we just want to begin reading here, and I'm just going to take a sermon title tonight, just a um, direction that we'll go tonight. We'll pick up from where we were Sunday, Lord willing, unless the Lord changes our direction. We'll go that way again on Sunday. Amen. Morning. You love the Lord. Daniel chapter 3, I'm just going to title this, Taking a Stand, Daniel chapter 3, let's just begin reading here, let me find my verse, I need to read it, I need that verse, praise the Lord, is that a wireless brother, okay, I got that, let's get straight to the wireless brother. Praise the Lord. What does our pastor say? The devil ain't nothing. <laughs> he ain't nobody. That's what he says. He ain't nobody. He ain't nobody. Boo, devil. Amen. Praise the Lord. You love the Lord? Amen. We're going to worship tonight. Enter right in with spirit and in truth. Say, Lord, give me my portion, what you have for me. Amen. How many can say that? Just, just cut all distractions out and say, Lord, just for this moment and this just little bit of time that we have, let's hear from heaven. That's our desire. I believe the Lord has something to speak to us. Daniel chapter 3, let's begin again. Hope that's better, Brother Travis, in the back. Thou, O King, verse 10, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, the hearty, harp. He names all these instruments. And at the end, he says, shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast in the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? In other words, really, guys, really? Like, is this real? Are you really going to do this? After everybody in the entire world and the whole culture and the whole system and everybody's fallen in line, you mean you're going to be an oddball and step out of line? Oh, yeah, that's what God's children always do. They never go with the flow. They go against the flow. And any true believer who really has a conviction of the, uh, from the Lord in his heart will, net, will always take a stand no matter what pressure is around him. He'll take a stand for the word of God. Did you say amen tonight? Amen. Notice he says, is it true? Verse 14, is it true? O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do you not serve my gods nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the heart, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. In other words, talk to the hand, devil, because you ain't getting my attention. In fact, I'm not even going to take anything, your threats and your, 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 all of your big boisterous words, I'm not even going to consider them. I serve a God and I answer to God and God alone. Hallelujah. He says, verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. How many have that kind of faith tonight to say, no matter what I face in my life, my God is able. Amen. Lord Jesus, we just bow our heads tonight. So thankful, Lord, for your grace. Lord, that's even brought us here and set us, set us in this building. Lord, how many other places, Lord, we could be, Father, tonight, 
how many, Lord, other, if the devil would have had his way in many of our lives here tonight, Lord, we wouldn't even be in a church. God, but because of grace, 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 marvelous grace, Lord, we not only find ourselves here in a building gathered with people, Lord, and hearing your word, that's a wonderful benefit. Lord, but we sit here with a hunger and a thirst for more of you tonight. I pray, God, that you would come by your spirit. Let me just move myself out of the way. I know that Satan has tried to hinder this service and he's always trying to hinder the word of God. He's not, he doesn't hate me, Lord. He hates the word that's inside of me. Lord, and I pray, God, that right now you would bind him, bind every spirit, Lord God, of hindrance that would try to prevent, Lord, the word from falling upon the hearts of your believers. I pray, God, that you would curse the enemy right now, Lord. And may, Father, we just join our faith together, our licks of fire, as we raise our hands, Lord, as a body of believers, and we say, God, we surrender ourself. We surrender our mind. We surrender our thoughts. We focus now on your word. For, Lord, it's your word that we want to receive. May you do it now, Lord, I pray, Father, to each one in Jesus Christ's name. And the church said, amen. amen. You can be seated. Let's pick it up here and uh, in verse uh, 15 again. We'll just begin, we'll just read it just uh, as, you, as you take your seats. Keep your Bible open there if you could. Now, if you be ready at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute. Now, this was amazing because all of these men were not named the name that Nebuchadnezzar had named them. In fact, that wasn't their identity. But one of the first things the devil will always try to do to sons and daughters of God is change their identity so that they're known by a different name. Now, your name is important and who God is. As the song says, I've got a new name. You don't have a new name. When you came to an altar and gave your heart to the Lord, you've got a name that was already written before the foundation of the world. And your life's journey is recognizing that name and bringing your body subject to what the word of God calls you. Well, we're going to take our jacket off tonight because I could tell we're fighting the devil and we're going to keep fighting and I'm going to roll my sleeves up and I'm going to keep preaching. You know why? Because the truth sets people free. And I want to preach the truth tonight. Satan will always try to rename you as he does to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This wasn't their original Hebrew names. This was their Babylonian names. In fact, their Hebrew names were Mishael, Hananiah, and Azariah. But yet you find here in the scripture, Satan has now changed their name or tried to change their identity. Remember, we preached this on Sunday that if we're not careful, we lose our identity of what the word says and we start confessing what the world says. And the world has a system and the world has a flow that it's trying to go. Culture and politics, education. If you haven't recognized that, just look at the education system today. Everyone is falling under the music or the symphony or the rhythm of what the devil is preaching. The entire world economy, governments, politics, music, entertainment, Hollywood, education, every world system today is following a world order that is the maestro is not the Lord Jesus, it's Satan himself. Even, Brother Barnum said, even the churches today, remember we read it on Sunday and he said, this will get me shot one day, that the churches are being bewitched. They're falling under the sound of a music to where it harmonizes and synchronizes everybody's mind in one spirit and one accord and they finally fall under one spirit and one, one accord and they worship the beast. But let me just preach here tonight. There's another music that I'm hearing in my heart. There's another rhythm that I want my life to line up to and it's not the devil's music or his rhythm or his time. But I believe the bride is hearing the music from heaven. And she's saying, Lord, line my life and synchronize my life with the rhythm coming from heaven. He always tries to get us to change our identity. Brother Branham says, God, he says that this has always been the battle. This has always been the struggle. Is, is man being able to recognize what the word said about them, not about somebody else, not about your brother or your sister, but when the word of God tells you, you're an overcomer, you're not a loser. You're a winner, you're not a loser. You're gonna make it, you're not gonna lose. We've gotta confess what the word of God said about us. 
and don't confess anything else. You say, well, my body tells me something different. My mind tells me something different. Well, make your body obey your confession and your confession is confessing what the word says. And Brother Branham says, the Holy Ghost in you makes your body come subject to the word of God. So I ask you, what are we confessing? What are we preaching to ourselves? What are we confessing with our lives? So he says here, notice this here, if you keep reading there in verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach answered and said to the old, said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar. So this battle even starts long before this moment that you read this in Daniel chapter three. The battle had already started with Daniel when he's uh, renamed, uh, uh, when he's, when he's named, given this name, Belteshazzar. You notice one of the very first things, and I think this is in chapter one, uh, it, it speaks about how that all of Israel was deported into Babylon and and their, 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 their selection that they bring is men like Daniel. And so Daniel, as well as all three of these men, Azariah, Mishael, and, and Hananiah, and, and their, their, their names are, 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 are Daniel and Azariah, Mishael, Hananiah. But Nebuchadnezzar renames them. Why? Because their name gave them their identity. It's who they were. It was their roots. It's where they came from. It's what lineage they came from. And, and so he renames them, he renames them Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. Now, if you look up these Babylonian names, it's actually names, Mishael's name means the moon god or god of the moon, son of the moon. That's not who Mishael was. That's not who his identity was. That's not what the word called him, but that's what the devil tried to rename him to. This was Hananiah. His name meant Jehovah. Uh, Jehovah, I, I think it was Jehovah conquers, Jehovah saves him. I could get that sand correction there, but his original name that God gave him was going to be important to him because it spoke of his history. It spoke of who he was. And so what's the first thing the devil tries to do is he renames all of these men and gives them Babylonian names. And so now we find ourselves in chapter one and they're, they're being told that they've got to eat the king's meat and they've got to drink the king's wine. In other words, if you're going to live here, you got to be like us. This is the pressure we're going to put you under. If you're going to live in the world, you got to be like the world. Well, that's a lie of the devil. Just because you live in the world don't mean you have to be of the world. I'll go further and say, just because you go to a worldly school don't mean you got to look like the worldly kids. Just because you're the only one believing in your family doesn't doesn't mean you got to bow down under pressure and tolerate a demon spirit. I say today, as my title says, take a stand for the word of God. Take a stand for the power of God. Take a stand for what you believe. We live in an age of complete tolerance, very much like Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon was. An age of pressure, a society to just fall in line, just fall in order, just get behind. Don't be an oddball. Don't try to stick out. No, you don't need to be so different. You know, everybody, everybody's just the same. Come on, you don't have to be, you don't have to be so odd. You don't have to be so different. And friends, if we're not careful, this is exactly where our world is heading to where everything is so offensive to everybody and feelings are, are so put on a pedestal to where you gotta be careful what you say. You gotta be careful how you say it. You gotta be careful the kind of words that you use. It's, it's, infiltrating, uh, it's infiltrating our schools. It's infiltrating our workplace. Trust me, I'm speaking by experience here, I know. To where you gotta be told you gotta use the right pronouns. You gotta say the right names. You, you can't call somebody something that might hurt their feelings or offend them. This is the pressure in the society that Satan's Eden would come to a climax or a crescendo in this age. And this is the exact age, an age of toleration where we're told we've got to tolerate things. John Wesley says some very popular, very familiar quote. I know that you know very well in the first slide there. Uh, if you just want to put that up, you can keep my PowerPoint up. This is a powerful statement. And John Wesley says, what one generation tolerates, the next generation will embrace. What one generation tolerates, the next generation will embrace. This is, this is precisely what this pressure was coming from, from Daniel. And it was this redefining or renaming 
And they, they would try to move the ancient landmarks and try to move the historical boundaries. This is the, the very assault of Hollywood. It's, it's, it's modus operandi. It's exactly what it's boldly taken a stand to say, we don't care about your values. We don't care about your traditions. We don't care about what you think. We're going to have a bold agenda and you better line up or we'll cancel you. And so there's this pressure, even in this age we live in, uh, even, even, even in, in masculinity. This is something I'm just going to take a little, just a, a side, a detour here just for a moment. But even, even in, 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 the, in the word of masculinity, it's a pretty powerful thing when you study the Bible. And, and there's so many, I'm just pulling up my references here that, I, that I'd written down. Notice some of these, some of these uh, uh, scriptures here. In 1 Corinthians 16, notice the language of the Bible about masculinity. Notice this here. He says in 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and this is from the NAS. You can put it on the King James and we could follow along. That's just fine. He says, be on alert and stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Now that's 1 Corinthians 16, 13. And your King James would word it like this. Quit you like men. Be strong. So what was Paul's, uh, uh, what was Paul's interpretation of a man? That a man is strong. He's not weak. He's not a wimp. He's not a weakling. Christ Jesus wasn't a weakling. There's a very different thing in your nature when you're gentle and, and Jesus was gentle. He, he had a spirit of a character of a man that was meek and lowly. But I promise you, he wasn't a weakling. He wasn't a wimp and he wasn't a pushover, especially to demons and devils and denominational spirits and pharisaical spirits. Jesus never backed down to a pharisaical demon, but he always spoke what the, he always spoke the word and gave it the word. But this is the words of the Bible. Be strong. Quit yourself like a man. This is Ephesians 6. Very familiar. Verse 10. Brethren, be strong. Brethren. This was addressed to the men, not the women. There's very good scriptures pertaining to a woman. There's also scriptures that are pertaining to men. And God's identity of a man is found in his word. Not in culture, not in systems of man, not in education. But the word has defined the boundaries of gender, of what a man is, of the character of the man, of the nature of the man, of the position of the man, the place of the man, the role of the man in the family. We have very clear outlined principles of what a man is. And I'm afraid we're living in an age where we've lost the men. We've lost, we're, we're losing. I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about the world that we live in. We've, if we're not careful, we, the masculinity begins to erode in the place of political correctness. I'll go further and say it affects pulpits. And I got the word of God to back me up on that. Where Brother Brandon would say, what's the problem today with children delinquency? It's not children, it's parent delinquency. And where does parent delinquency come from? Weak pulpits who are, not, who are afraid of what the celebrity might think or afraid of what the people might think or afraid of losing congregants or hurting somebody's feeling. I'll just say it again as, as my good friend says, feelings are overrated. Feelings are overrated. We can become so careful to try to say the right thing that we diminish the truth. And the truth is the only thing that'll set people free. Can I get a good hearty amen out of 100% of the church here? The truth is the only thing that will set people free. Dancing around fillings and patty caking the word of God and preaching it diluted and filtered because of how you might want to, what, what others might think will never bring freedom to God's family. It's only when the word is preached in the straight, unadulterated, purest form. And if we're not careful, we, 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 we dance around words, as we said. But let me, let me just say this. It's not, it's, 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 it's Satan's desire. It's not God's blueprint. It's Satan's method to try to put pressure as from a Jezebel spirit to try to change what the word of God says. Men have always, the carnal mind has always tried to reculturize 
to make things more palpable to, uh, uh, to, to, the, to, the, to the world, to the carnal mind. They've always tried to dress it up, try to, but, you know, just paint it up and sort of jazz it up. In that raw form, they don't like it because it doesn't set well with the carnal mind. Amen. Notice this here, God is, and this is Ephesians, brethren, be strong, Ephesians 6.10, be strong, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the grace. 2 Timothy 2.1, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. I find these words over and over. My brethren, stand up. Quit yourself like a man. Be strong in the Lord. Don't be a weakling. Don't be a wimp. Don't bow down to the pressure. Take a stand. Be strong in your conviction. I believe more than ever before, we need men of God, young people alike, who will take a stand for what they believe. No matter what it costs them, no matter what it makes them look like, no matter who, it, what, if friends leave them or family leaves them, it's time the body of Christ takes a stand for the word of God. Be strong in the, in the grace. This is 1 John 2, 14. Young men, you are strong and the word of God abideth in you and you have overcome the wicked one. This is the message of the Bible. This is what the Bible speaks about. It's not, you don't find wimpy, weak, weakling characters in the Bible. You don't find them in the Old Testament. You don't find them in the New Testament. You find men who are courageous, you know, courage is an attribute of God. Courage is an attribute. Men and women both have courage. And I could read you many things in the Bible. Women like Rahab, who stood out for courage. I don't want to give you the wrong ideas or to make you think. I don't want, I don't want to say something wrong and, and, and lose the effect of what I'm trying to say here. I'm not trying to diminish women. But let me just say this to the men. It's your place if no one else has courage to have courage. It's your place, men, men of God. If, if everybody else turns away, it's our place to take a stand. If everybody loses boldness, loses boldness, it's the men who's got to remain bold and faithful to the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. He says, brethren, be strong. This is what the Bible says in Hebrews 11, the, even, the, even the Hebrews of the faith in verse 33. This is what the Bible says about men. They subdued kingdoms. They wrought right, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. I don't read weaklings. I don't read wimps. I don't read cowards. I read men. I read men who were strong in the Lord. They stopped the mouths of lions. Notice this next verse, verse 34. Quench the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Amen. Wax valiant in fight. Turn to flight the armies of the aliens. This is what men of God did for the kingdom of God. They didn't back down to pressure. Can I get an amen? They didn't back down to pressure. They didn't, they didn't back down. No matter how much the world changed, they stuck with the unchanging word. No matter how much pressure was put upon them, they stood in the fiery furnace. They stood in the lion's den. Oh, somebody help me preach here tonight. I'm preaching about a true faith. Faith that takes a stand for the word of God. Faith that is courageous in spite of all kinds of pressure and fear. Faith that'll, that'll take a stand for the word of God. You see this, this loss, even uh, men like this, even the apostle Paul speaks of it. We read it in 1 Corinthians 16. Be watchful, stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Let all that you do be done in love so you can have love, do things in love, and still be strong as a man. Amen. You notice this, this uh, what you can read about of as we said, we have women in the Bible who were strong, Deborah and Rahab and Esther, and who you can see examples of, of great courage. 
But let me just say there were great, there were much, a much larger number that you find in the Bible. That, and I think it's on purpose. I think it's God's word meets the challenge of the hour. God's word is not, it meets the challenge no matter how dark the world gets. Let me just say this, friends, no matter how dark this world gets and how much they shut out the light, they'll never shut the light of this gospel up. It's the unchanging, infallible, vindicated word. And if you preach the word the way it was written, it don't meet any challenge in your life. I believe it was written this way on purpose that we have examples of men like Gideon who could be out of weakness could be made strong. We have men like Joshua. We have men like, like, like David, like Jonathan, Nehemiah, even the prophets. These were the, even the apostles that Jesus cho chose the 12. Uh, we have Jesus himself who, who were men of courage who stood no matter what came against them. They weren't cowards. They didn't retreat to the devil. I'm not talking about, a, I'm not talking about an arrogance or a boisterous or male chauvinism. I'm talking about real true sons of God made in the image of God. If you're made in the image of God, you've got a conqueror and a warrior down inside of you. You don't have a jellyfish spine. You've got a backbone who will take a stand when the enemy comes against your family. You don't run to the left or to the right. You stand and say, devil, I'm not leaving. I'm not a coward. I'm not backing up. I'm going to keep standing for my family. Standing for my children, standing for the word of God. And notice these, you can read all the acts throughout the Bible of moments of great, extraordinary courage. Men of valor is, is Dick Gideon's called, man of mighty, man of valor. And you'll, you'll notice this is, this is what the Bible speaks of when, it, when even, even men throughout history you know, men throughout history, strong, courageous men, they would make a stand. They would, I'm reminded of Martin Luther when he nails his theses to the, to the church door and he says, here I stand. I can do no other. I'm going to tell you what he was. He wasn't a coward. He wasn't going to back down, though, no matter what it was going to cost him. I've preached it here before of uh, the words of Winston Churchill when, when, all, when, they, when all seems lost and, 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 and the entire nation is gripped in fear because it, was, it, it looked like all hope was gone. And at the moment when the entire nation was in despair, was hiding, the entire nation and leaders were hiding, Winston Churchill grabs a microphone. You know, words are a powerful thing because your confession is a powerful thing. And words have the power to change the circumstances. Don't ever underestimate the power of a confession of the word of God. Don't ever underestimate the power of what you say. Because the devil can't read your mind, but he can hear your words. I say this to the mothers and the fathers of this church. What we say about our children, be careful what words you use. I say it to the brothers and sisters, what we say to each other, what we confess when the devil comes. I'm talking about serious things, doctor's reports and, and, and real issues and real life problems. Don't ever underestimate and be careful what you confess and what you say. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? I think of a man like Churchill who could say, Take a microphone in the midst of a shaking, quaking nation where other men are retreating and other nations are retreating. And Winston Churchill grabs a microphone and says, we shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight in the streets. We shall fight in the landing grounds. We shall fight in the hills. But we shall never surrender. And that was, his, that was what a voice could speak out. And it energized an entire nation who in spite of their circumstance could reach out in faith because of the words of a brave man who spoke the word I say today if you're in fear and you're surrounded by pressure start confessing the word of God and say I'm never going to surrender I'm never going to be a coward I'm never going to turn around I'm going to keep pressing on no matter what comes my way devil words have the power to change an entire family Listen, friends, we could preach all night on this and we don't have all night, so I'm not going to preach till Sunday. But we, we can read about this, that, that 
There, there, was a, there was a certain, in a man, there comes a certain point in the spider, in the, in the face of difficulty, where he's resolved to a certain principle. And this is what Churchill came to. It didn't matter what he lost. He was resolved to say, I'm going to fight. Amen. And let my last dying breath, if I go down in smoke, let my last dying breath say, I will never surrender to the devil. I will never surrender, Satan. I'll fight you in the church. I'll fight you on my knees. I'll fight you in the pulpit. I'll fight you in the schools. I'll fight you. Uh, Satan, I'll fight you when you come against my family. I'll fight you if you try to take my body. If you try to come and attack my loved ones, I'm going to stand here. I'm not surrendering, devil. I'm going to take the word. I'm going to take God at his word and watch God prove his word. That's what God needs is somebody to take a stand for his word. Moments of great courage, inspirational, powerful acts of men who made bold statements in the face of great difficulties. I'm going to tell you the most boldest, most courageous words ever spoken was actually spoken by Jesus when he's faced with death and he knows his end. This is so powerful. I read this just here a few moments before coming out. In Matthew 20, verse 17, notice this, Matthew 20, if you pull it up, if you could. I'm gonna show you a real masculine statement, a real man who could really take a stand. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 20, verse, verse 17, you got that, Ethan? And Jesus going up to Jerusalem took the 12 disciples apart in the way and he's gonna say something to them. He took them to the, he took them to the side and Jesus says in verse 18, behold, here they are, we go up to Jerusalem. Now this, if you read the next words, and the son of man shall be betrayed by the, unto the chief priests and unto the scribes. This is what I'm facing. But Jesus speaks words and says, behold, we go up to Jerusalem. He wasn't a coward. He wasn't gonna back down. He was gonna face what laid in front of him. Behold, we go up to Jerusalem may seem like something so simple to you, but I think it's so powerful. In the face of knowing what he was going to face, yet his confession, he wasn't just gonna say it, he was gonna follow it and be a doer. He was gonna follow, he was gonna put footsteps to what he was confessing. It's amazing because this is, this is what happens even, even in the modern world that we live in. We have, a, as Paul said, I fear less by any means as the serpent beguiled uh, the mind of Eve from the simplicity that's in, your, in Christ. So also shall your minds also be deceived to, 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 to serve it, to accept a Jesus who we have not preached. Oh, I'm just gonna say it today. There is a Jesus being preached that Paul never preached. There is, a, there is a Jesus of the Bible who is preached and the weakening of pulpits and men who are afraid to speak the word of God and afraid of what it'll cost them has reformed and recreated a false image of Jesus. Even the feministic, the, 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 the feminization of Jesus, even, even as in, in, you find it in, in worship, modern worship music. You find it in modern pulpits and modern sermons of feel-good vibes and feel-good atmospheres. And they feminize Jesus. Why, you say? Because they, they are bowing to the music of Nebuchadnezzar under the pressure to change and just get in line. Remember we preached it here just a few, maybe, a, maybe three weeks ago about a man who I was hearing and he got up to make a stand about the transgender and homosexuals. We accept you, we love you and we just wanna make a bold statement. We love you here. And, and again, I'll say it again, I'm not criticizing, I don't know the man's motive, but I'm just here to say you'll never help a man who has a demon spirit by patty caking and playing with it. You've gotta speak the word. It's the only thing that'll set them free. And they, 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 have, they have recultured this modern 
Jesus, this modern uh, 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 feminine Jesus. Uh, we, 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 we can see this even, even uh, let me just find my place here. Where we can even see this. Let me just say this to you, friends. I'll just go ahead and say this. He was a sacrificial lamb, lamb, but he was also the lion of the tribe of Judah. He was a lamb, but he was also a lion. He was also a warrior. Brother Branham said when, the, when he went down and descended to the lower parts of hell, it wasn't that meek and lowly he's Jesus. He said, but it was the mighty conqueror going to conquer the devil's kingdom. And so even today, we, we, if we're not careful, we can misrepresent what the Bible gives of Jesus. That's why it's so important to read the word of God for yourself. Can you say amen? And, if, and the world today has produced an image of, uh, a false image, as, as Jesus says, Paul says, that you would, you would follow another Jesus whom we have not preached and another Jesus whom we have not taught. Amen. And they preach a, a, an anemic, an anemic Jesus with no power. Come on, somebody help me here tonight. An anemic Jesus with no power. And he's just, uh, you know, almost even the paintings that you can see of even from Catholicism. And listen, friends, you, yeah, I, I mean this. You gotta be careful what some of the images you, you take in that replace the definition of Jesus in the Bible. Because sometimes Catholicism has a great influence on, on, on images. You do an image search of some of the apostles and, and, and you wonder, man, is that really what they, I'm not sure that's what they look like. You gotta be careful with that. But, but Catholicism, even, even some of the images you can see of Jesus, it almost presents a very soft, very soft smile and very feministic and very weak. Hello? And so you, you have this, you have this gentle, you know, loving, you know, Jesus standing, even as we preach on Sunday, standing at the door and, and knocking. And I, and I believe that. I, I absolutely believe that he's a kind, loving, compassionate, heavenly father. But Brother Branham says, don't just tell me that he's just a God of mercy. He's also a God of judgment. And as we said on Sunday, you'll never know his grace until you know his wrath. You'll never know his goodness until you weigh his severity and the severity of the word of God. And so the entire world hates. Why do you think this is? Because the world hates masculinity. The, the world, the common cultural world calls biblical word-based ma manhood toxic. It's male chauvinism. It's toxic. You try to tell that to people and some of your coworkers about, you know, your, your, about your home and how your home is construct of your home, how the wife is the homemaker and she stays at home. And, you know, that they, they would, and I've had, had, they look at you like you're bonkers. What are you doing? You're just suppressing your wife and, and you're just, you're, they, listen, they, they don't know what it's like to have a home and not a house. Because a true woman in a true place has an atmosphere of that home and that man comes to that house and it's not a house, it's a home. It's an atmosphere. It's a family created in the image of God. But they would, they would never understand that. They would never. Listen, friends, they, the modern world today would call what we call life and family life toxic and suppressive. And there's a pressure that goes with that. They, 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 they despise any, let me say it. The more and more time goes, the more and more they will despise biblical values. And so you say, what are they gonna do then? They're gonna shut us up. No, they won't. The, rather than, Satan would much rather not shut the, the church up. He'd rather just change what the word says and change what the pulpit is preaching. So he modernizes it and recon, you know what? The carnal mind will always, with itching ears, they'll always go towards that direction. Yes, Hello, somebody. Yes. Same reason why some people leave the message and they say it was just rules. It was just prison to them. That's the carnal mind speaking. Yes. It's just rules and regulations and prison. Oh, I don't know about you. It's not prison to me. It's the joy of my life. It's the passion of my life. I see a hand of, some see a hand of judgment. I see a hand of mercy. Some see a hand of, of, of condemnation. I see the loving hand of my father who cares enough about my soul to tell me the truth. 
I see protection, not prison walls. So they, they deem it uh, 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 toxic. This is why even the, one of the greatest, read this just this afternoon, the, the, one of the top billboard charts was a, a, a female artist who wrote a song called God is a Woman. And it topped the number one uh, on the billboard top 100 list for weeks. Why? Because they're, they, they, they're, there is an agenda to redefine God, to redefine Jesus. Because they won't just reject Jesus. No, you have to understand Satan is just as religious. Cain was just as religious as Abel was. He's much more interested in keeping the church open with a false gospel than closing the doors of the church. He's much more interested in appealing to the spiritual religious mind and someone has a little bit of light in their heart and they have just a little bit of light so Satan will come and pervert that and put all the light that they have out and they'll call light darkness and darkness they'll call light. It's the world that we live in. And so you notice this, this is even, you say, Brother Matt, how do we get to this place? Weak pulpits. And let me, just, let me just throw this in here. I'm not just talking about this box right here we call a pulpit. I'm not just talking about this church and this pulpit, but the entire body of Christ, you've got a pulpit. You've got a word that you're living in, that you're confessing and that you believe. And weak Christianity and weak lives. Somebody help me here tonight. It's been weak pulpits. The church has been so, 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 so uh, 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 craving of, of a modern message with modern jokes and, and comedians. And, and, and a pastor gets up and 30 minutes of his sermon is just a comedic strip of, of, of words and things that he's lined out to make sure he gets a good laugh. You say, Brother Matt, what does that produce? It produces a Jesus that they want, but not a Jesus who was sent. It produces a Jesus who they crave for, but not the Jesus of the Bible. And consequently, we're left with a Jesus who's just a weakling and a wimp. He's just there in your back pocket to give you everything that you want, and, 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 and then some. He's there to fulfill your dreams. He's there to give your business more customers and, 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 and bigger bank accounts and bigger pockets. That's all Jesus has been reduced to. Just a, just a weakling, just a passive, you know, passive, tolerant, tolerant of everything, tolerant of, your, of our sins, tolerant of our attitudes, tolerant of our feelings. But let me present to you what the Bible tells me about Jesus. My Jesus is supreme. My Jesus is king. Oh, come on, do I have some of his people here tonight? I said, my Jesus is king. He's King Jesus. He's reigning on his throne. He's supreme authority. And he's not only my savior, he's also my judge. He's also my Lord. He's also the ruler of my life. As Brother Branham says, and in the door, indoors. And he says, when he comes into your house, he doesn't just want to stay at the front door. He's coming in to take over. He's coming in to take over your home. He's coming over to take the reins. And I say, oh God, take over my house, Lord. Take over my home. I give it up to you, Lord Jesus. This is exactly how the devil tries to get in as we're just going to look a little bit further here in Daniel chapter three. Notice what they, what they say. Eat the, king's, drink, eat the king's meat and drink his wine. You know, Daniel proved something very, very small. He, he proved something very amazing as the Bible records and Daniel says, okay. And you know what Daniel does? He refuses. Yeah. You say, that's such a small thing, Daniel. I mean, really? You're going to make a big stink over what you drink and it's just different kind of food? Come on, really? I mean, is it really that big? Big of a deal? Oh, but Daniel understood. When you take a stand for the small things in your life, 
then you'll have the faith to take a stand for the big things that come. And most of the time, the reason people fall under the big pressure is because they never took a stand when it was just a small thing. He takes a stand for just a little bit of ground. He could have given just a little bit of ground. Come on, don't be so firm. We gotta be, just give a little. You know, that's the tactic of the enemy. Don't be so firm. And so now we find our place in Daniel. Turn there, Daniel chapter three. Notice this here. Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said unto them, is it true? <laughs> is it real? Like, this is real. Like, re like really? Really, Shadrach, Meshach, you've been in my courts. You've been, I've made you rulers. I've put you in high places in my economy. And here I'm having a little celebration and a little party. And you can't just go with the flow and, you know, just do like everybody else does. No, a real true believer won't give the devil one inch. I said a real true believer won't give the devil one inch. They won't compromise. If it's just persuasion, you'll compromise. If it's just persuasion, when you get around the right people and the right crowd, you do the right thing. You live the right kind of life. You dress the right way. But let me just say this. If you get around your worldly people and worldly associates, if it's just a persuasion and not a conviction, you'll dress different. You'll talk different. You'll walk different. Come on, somebody help me preach. If it's really just a persuasion when friends and pressure and coworkers and associates, even other family members... You'll change the way that you look. You won't be so, so, so bold. Oh, friends, don't you realize the world's, they need a bold message. They need a bold believer who's on fire for the, with passion to live the word of God. Not a weakling. They see it. Don't you realize the world sees enough of socialized and culturized Christians who will take a little social drink here, a little social drink there, I do, watch a little movie here. Doesn't matter if you go to the movie. Doesn't matter really what you watch. Come on, has a little bit of profanity, but you know, we hear that every day. It's not really that big of a deal. I don't, don't you realize that if you don't have a real revelation in your heart, you'll bow under pressure. But let me just say, if you've got a real true conviction from the Holy Ghost, it don't matter if it costs you everything in your life. You will not compromise. You will take a stand for the word of God. You'll say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a stand for what's true. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar says, is it true? <laughs> is the, I love this. And he says, in his rage and fury, you can imagine how mad he was. You see some people as they get that same demon spirit on them when you don't say the right pronoun or say the right word or you say the wrong thing about gender. They don't just get offended, they get enraged. It's a spirit, call it what it is. That's not that person. That's not that individual, that's a demon spirit resisting the word of God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, verse 16, said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. This is what faith says. Faith says, I'll confess what the word of God says no matter what it costs me. I said, let me, that, 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 that maybe you didn't hear me. The word of God, this is what faith says. I'll, I will confess the word of God no matter what it cost me. No matter what the king says, no matter what my dad says, no matter what my mom says, no matter what my school friends say, no matter what the church people say, no matter what you label me, no matter what you call me, I'm going to take a stand for the word of God. I'm going to take a stand for what is true. And I'm going to confess what the word says. But notice verse 18. This is so much more powerful than verse 17. But if not, verse 18. But if not, do you realize what you're saying? You're saying that even if you go into the fire and you burn, do you realize before you make a bold statement like this, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but if not, this is what their answer says, 
Be it known unto thee, O King, that we will not bow. We will not bend. We will not compromise. It doesn't matter the outcome of my confession of faith. Oh, come on, do I have some real believers here tonight? This answer is straight, firm, direct, and resolute. Be it known, if not, O oh king, even if he doesn't. Can you say that tonight? Can we have a bold faith? To say it doesn't matter the results of what my confession is confession of confessing does not change my attitude towards the word of God. Even if I burn, <laughs> this was their confession, even if not, be it known, we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. This was a principle that would, no matter what comes, this was, a, this was a mind that was made up. This was a mind of courage. This was a mind of determination that says I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord and I'm not gonna retreat. There's no retreat in my vocabulary. It doesn't matter if I burn. It doesn't matter what the outcome is. I'm not gonna compromise. I'm not not gonna bend. Oh, help me preach here tonight, church. It doesn't matter what happens in my life. Even if God doesn't heal me, it doesn't mean he's not a healer. Even if God does not deliver, it doesn't mean he's not. You say, that's what real faith is? That's what real, true faith. When you take a stand for the word of God, it's saying it doesn't matter the outcome. God is still a healer. God is still a savior. God is still a deliverer. God is still a provider. It doesn't matter the outcome. I'm not going to bow down to your image because true faith has muscles. I said true faith has great big muscles. In fact, it's got hair on its chest. <laughs> True faith does. It's burly. It's masculine. It takes a stand for the word of God. It doesn't matter. You know, that's the kind of faith God's looking for. He's not looking for the hyped up and you can get hyped up. He's not looking for the hyped up, pepped up. He's looking for the true resolve and a real believer that says it doesn't matter the outcome, Lord. I'm gonna serve you anyhow. Doesn't matter what my tomorrow says. I'm gonna go on with Jesus anyhow. Doesn't matter what comes my way. I'm gonna keep confessing a perfect promise and a perfect word and a perfect God who's more than able and more than enough. It doesn't matter what happens. I'm gonna take my stand and watch God back up his word. Oh, that's the way to get, you wanna get to God? That's how you gotta get to God. You say, I got a need in my body. I got a need in my family. That's how you get to God. Brother Branham says, how do you get to God? Be on his hands. Be on his hands. Go to put my PowerPoint there, slide three. Brother Branham says, that's the way you wanna get God. Be on his hands every morning, every night, every day, all the time, constantly. Just keep seeking. He's talking about that little woman who won't stop knocking on that unjust judge and he's knocking on his door and knocking on his door. Brother Branham says, that's how you get your answer to God. You be on his hand. Say, I got something I need, Lord. What are you doing? I'm approaching your throne again. But you didn't get your answer yesterday, but I'm back here today. But you didn't get your answer last week, but I'm back here today, God. I'm gonna be on your hands. Just keep seeking. Just keep asking. Just keep knocking. Don't knock a little while and get tired and go away. Just keep standing there. Amen. Say, Lord, I'm here and I'm not going to leave. I'm on your hands now. <laughs> I'm going to stay right here. This is Perseverance 1963. You getting tired listening? Brother Branham says that, he says, I'm gonna stay, this is what your prayer is to the Lord. I'm gonna stay right here. Lord, you tired of me, you tired of listening? I'm having a great time knocking. I'm gonna keep knocking. I'm gonna keep knocking. You ever have somebody do that? Your little brother, your little sister, and they just keep knocking and knocking? It gets annoying. It gets irritating. 
You know, this is what Brother Branham says you do to God. You keep knocking. You stay on his hands. Come on, somebody. You catching it here tonight? Brother Branham says, you tired of listening? I'm having a great time knocking because I know you're coming. Amen. That's when something happens. He has to get you off his hand. He comes out to answer you. Now, faith finds this. There's only one thing you can, you can, he says, there's only one thing can hold this sword. That's the hand of faith. The hand of faith is the only thing that can yield the sword of faith, uh, the, the sword of the word. Now, you might have a weak arm, just enough to pick it up for justification. You're so weak, maybe that's all you can cut through. But this sword of the word will cut free every promise that God made in it, if they got a good, strong arm of faith holding it there, saying, I believe God for my healing. I believe God for, how many believers do we have here tonight? I believe God for my healing. I believe God for my baptism. God made the promise and faith lays hold. He holds this sword and it'll cut her out. Brother Branham says, God made the promise. Faith holds this sword. It'll cut her out the rock yonder. Every promise of God can be cut free by the word of God, for it's a sword. How, Brother Matt? By standing your ground. Standing your ground with the devil. Brother Branham talks about this little woman, and he says she had many hindrances. She had many hindrances, but her faith didn't have any. I said she had many hindrances, but her faith didn't have any. And you might have a lot of hindrances. Every person that starts out to meet Christ will find you got a lot of hindrances, but your faith don't have any. Faith don't have no hindrance. Faith has hairs on his chest. Great big muscles. Reason rises up and said, you know, it's reasonable. Faith pulls his muscles back and sticks out his big chest. Listen to what Brother Branham says here. Faith pulls, uh, the voice rises up and says, oh, that don't sound too reasonable. You're getting a little bit crazy. You're getting a little bit bold there. Everyone's going to think you're an oddball. Faith pulls back his muscles, sticks out his big chest and says, shut up and sit down. And reason jumps over in his corner and takes his stool. I say, you ought to speak to the devil tonight and say, devil, go back where you belong. Reasoning, go back where you belong. You don't belong in my body doubt. You don't belong in my body fear. I've got the word of God. It's my answer. Every time, anytime the devil comes. I've got the answer in the word of God. Faith has got muscles. <laughs> he means what he says. <laughs> Come on, do we have some believers here tonight? Just press right on through. Your faith takes you right on. See how faith has no hindrance. It goes on anyhow. Nothing's gonna stop it. As I said, it's brawny, big muscles. It's got the floor. I love how Brother Brandon dramatizes this. Rest of them are scared of it. Yes, sir, they'll run from it like smallpox. They just get plumb away. Haven't got nothing to do with that. When faith, big faith rises up, say, I know who I believe. I'm persuaded. That's it. That's how you get faith to believe. You don't confess what your symptoms say. You don't confess what the doctor says. You confess the word of God and faith begins to build and and faith begins to lay hold on the promise of God. Start confessing the word of God. You say, I need faith, brother Matt. Start confessing the word of God. Watch faith begin to rise up. Oh, my brother, my sister, it's inside of you. Say, don't feel it. It's inside of the seed God put inside there. God put something inside of a believer to accept the word of God. God, I said, God put something inside of his family to believe the word of God in spite of any circumstance. There's something inside of you that's a part of you. If you'll just start confessing the word of God, you'll lay hold on the promise of God. Brother Branham says, notice this. Faith has no hindrance. They'll run from it. Brother Branham says, I know in whom I have believed. That's it. There's no fear in faith. Faith knows about it. Faith, as I've always said, this is why Christ speak. It's got great big muscles and hairs on the chest. Faith said, shut up. I'm not allowed to say that word. You are to the devil. Say, don't say that. Don't say it to your brother, to your sister. Don't say, definitely don't say it to your mom and your daddy. But when the devil comes knocking on your door, 
Big faith rises up with big muscles and says, shut up, devil. That's all. I know where I'm at. Hallelujah. The rest of them say, well, maybe he does. But you've got to stand up and show your muscles. I said, I know this is simple, church, but I want to get it through us here tonight to give us faith. He says, that's all. You've got to stand up and show your muscles. You think you're showing your muscles when you're doubting the word and the promise of God? You think we're, show, we're, she, you think we're showing our muscles when things aren't going our way and we come to Wednesday night church and the song leader's worshiping and we just sort of stand there and just sort of barely open our mouth and everybody knows something's happening that's not good. Hello? You think you're showing your muscles then? You know, you know what you're doing? You're showing the devil that he's got you whipped. And Brother Brandon says, when he sees you down like that, he really pours it on. You're not showing the day, you're not showing the Lord that you believe, you're showing the devil what you're doing is working, devil, keep doing it. I say tonight, no matter how you feel, no matter what you came in here feeling like, it's time your faith stands up and says, shut up, devil, shut up, devil. You're not gonna have my children. You're not gonna have my body. You're not gonna have my health. I'm purchased by the Lamb of God. I have been purchased and bought with the precious blood. I'm gonna confess his word. He says, shut up. Rest of them so maybe he does, but you've got to stand up and show your faith. You know, the faith that Moses had didn't believe in a so far. This is what Pharaoh begins to say to say to him. Brother Brandon begins to pick this up and why why Christ speak. And he says, he says here, now notice Pharaoh, just gonna change just to here just for a moment. Make sure I didn't have make sure I didn't miss anything. I might have skipped something there. Uh, what do we got for the next slide, Ethan? Now, yes, Pharaoh used his wisdom on Moses. The watch, he said, I'll tell you what. Ah, I'll make an agreement with you. After the plagues don't eat him up, said, I'll make an agreement with you. You just go for a little worship. Three days. Just go so far and don't go no further. But you know, that was Pharaoh's senses told him that. See, you just go so far. In other words, the devil doesn't mind if you have a little rejoicing in church on Wednesday night. But on Thursday, you better be back to the same old deep, dark dungeon that you were in on Tuesday. He don't get scared when we shout and rejoice in church. He don't get scared when you shout and praise in church and you jump and dance. He gets scared when on Thursday and on Monday, when all hell is breaking loose against you, your confession still confesses the word of God. Your body's still rejoicing. You're still shouting and you're still praising because you know the same God who you felt on Wednesday is faithful to his own word and his own promise. Brother Branham says, he says, you know, just go just a little bit further. You know, just, just, just a little bit. Pharaoh says, you know, don't go, don't go so far. He says, don't go so far. You just go so far and don't go no further. Go to the next slide. I've lost my place. But you know, the faith that Moses had didn't believe in a so far religion. Let me just say the bride of Christ don't believe in a so far religion. He said, we're going all the way. That's right. We're going to the promised land. We just don't go out here and make a denomination and stop. We go on through. Amen. I'm going to the promised land. God promised us it. Go to the next slide. He says, how many Pharaohs have we got today standing in the pulpit? Heads of organizations. Now, if you just do this and just do that, that's all. Well, see, just so far. But Moses said, oh, no, 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 no. Moses said, oh, no, no, no. Pharaoh said, well, why not? If you're gonna have that kind of religion, I'll tell you what you do. This is what the devil, I mean, you know what, you know what Brother Benham's showing us here? The devil will always, if he doesn't sell you on one lie, he'll always reinterpret and make it a little bit more, a little bit more reasonable. Tori, you'll finally go, you know what? Okay, devil, I can believe that. And if you're not careful, you'll let the devil reinterpret what God told you and change it and re-narrate it. And God gave you a promise and said, I'm going to do this. And the devil comes, you know, maybe the Lord didn't really mean that the way that he said it. Maybe it was spiritual. It wasn't really just a revelation you were going to get. It wasn't actually something that was going to happen. And he'll try to reinterpret it and water it down, wash it down, water it down. Favor said, well, why not? You know, okay, if you're going to do that, if you're going to have that kind of religion, I'll tell you what you do. Just you and the elders go worship. See, just, in other words, just you and the deacons and all the preachers, and all, all the ministry, but don't let that get started in the whole church. I don't want the whole church becoming fanatical. You can have all that kind of religion, 
He says, you can have all that kind of religion, uh, but don't let it, don't let it get to, don't let it, he says, don't let it get among the people. Next slide. He says, you know what Moses said? There won't even be a hoof left behind. In case you didn't hear me, Pharaoh, I'm not buying your lies. I'm not buying your reinterpretation to what my God said. My God's word will stand. It'll never change. It's true. It's yea and amen. I'll keep confessing it. And I want you to know it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it don't look like. It don't even matter how I feel. It don't matter if it doesn't make sense. God said he'll give you your children. God said he'll give you your lost loved ones. God said prodigals will come back to you. God said he's going to heal your body. God said he's going to deliver you of that thing that you can't give victory over. And you say, Satan says, you know, I I don't know. You've been waiting on that so long. You know what faith says? Faith says it doesn't matter if I understand it. doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense. doesn't matter if all the evidence I have is against me. I'm going to let you know I'm not letting go of my promise. I'm taking a stand for the word of God. I'm a believer and that's what believers do. They confess the promises of God. Hallelujah. There won't even be a hoof left behind. We're all going Get it through your head, devil. We're all going in the rapture. None of our young people are going to get left behind. None of our family members. I don't care if they've left the message. I don't care if they've left your house. I don't care if they're not even here tonight. You claim them and say, God, you put a promise in your word, and it doesn't matter what my circumstances look like. I'm going to confess the word of God. I'm going to believe the word of God. I'm going to keep knocking on your door until the door's answered and the door's open. I'm going to stay right here and take a stand for the word of God. I'm on your hands. I'm not going. Can you have this confession? Unless they can go too. (laughs) I believe a real mother will say amen to that. I'm not going unless they go too. That's what faith says. Oh, what a gallant servant. I want to take them with me just because I've got and I sit down and say, well, now this is all right. No, sir. We want the people too. Every one of us is going. He said, we ain't going to leave even, we have not even, he says, he says, we ain't going to even leave every sheep or anything behind. There's not going to be a hoof left back. We're all going in the promised land. He says, every one of us, whether you're a housewife, whether you're a little maid, whether you're an old woman or a young man, an old man, whatever you are, we're going anyhow. There's not going to be one of us left. Amen. Every one of us is going and we ain't going to stop at nothing else. You know, finally, Pharaoh said, get out. Just get out, Moses. This is what the this is what the confession of the word of God finally does to the devil. He finally just says, "Fine, you can have it. Just get out of here. I don't want to hear your praising anymore. I don't want to hear your preaching anymore. I don't want to hear your confession anymore. Just get out." <laughs> God just plagued him with the voice of Moses. And I tell you what you can do, you can plague, you play, a mother can plague the devil's mind by confessing the word of God. Your voice can become a torment to the demon spirit that afflicts you. I said your voice, not the preacher's voice, not God's prophet's voice, but your confession can torment the devil in your own life. I say tonight you ought to start confessing what the word of God says and cast everything else aside. <laughs> he struck everything. He'd done everything there was to be done. He stopped. He put the sun down in the middle of the day. God just poured it all out. He done everything. He blackened the days. He brought frogs, fleas, lice, everything, fire, smoke, death to his families and everything else. He done everything till finally favor had to say, get out, take all you got and go. I believe one day the devil is going to turn loose and he's just going to say, get out. <laughs> Oh, Brother Branham says, oh my, praise be to God. I say, oh my, praise be to God. I'm so glad that a man can come so completely serve God. I'm so glad, notice the next slide. I'm so glad that a man can so completely serve God till the devil don't know what to do with him. Just obeyed so completely till the devil said, oh my, get away. I don't want to hear it no more. That's right. You can do it so completely 
so completely till the devil says, just leave. Amen, Amen, somebody. You can live, I love how Brother Random says that. You can live so close to God, the devil don't even, can't even find you. You can live so deep in the Holy Spirit, the devil can't even find you. I say, God, give me that kind of faith to where I live so close to God, the devil can't even find me. But Lord, let me say this also. Let my confession be so powerful to deny all of what's around me and every lying vanity Satan has put through me. Let my voice confess the word of God in so much that it haunts hell and torments the demon spirits in my life. Let me start confessing the word of God. As Brother Brandon says, you can live so much to the devil, don't even know what can, don't even know how to find you. As Brother Brandon says, he speaks of the man the, the other day, and he says, where the, the, he says, where a man, he said, the devil got before him. I know you know this story, but I just love telling it. He said, the devil got before him. And he says, and you know, he said, that little devil there was speaking to him and lying to him, whispering in his ear. And he says, I watched him. He says, he was just so small. And he says, and every time, Brother, Brother Branham just tells the story, he said, he said he was just a little bitty, little bitty uh, uh, devil. And he said, boo. <laughs> and the man said, and I sort of got scared, you know. Whoa. He's sort of like, you get close to something and you, you just jump back. <laughs> Brother Branham says, that's what the man did. He said, I just, he says, you know, the man would go before him and he said, he said, boo. And he said, I jumped back. And he said, boo, and I jumped back again. And he said, boo, and he said, and I jumped back again. And the man said, you know what I realized? He said, I realized every time I, he would say boo and I would jump back, he says he'd get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Now this is real, this isn't fictitious, this isn't Disney World. This is a real demon spirit. And every time you back up and run from him, that same doubt and fear just gets bigger and bigger and bigger to where it seems completely overwhelming to you. Brother Branham says, he said, every time I jump back, he'd holler, boo. I'd jump back, he'd get bigger and I'd get littler and I'd get smaller. Boo. And I'd jump back. And he said, every time the devil would get bigger. And he says, and, and he says, and I'd get littler. And he said, he kept saying, Boo. He said, I'd get smaller each time when I jump back and he'd get bigger. He said, you know what? I know I had to fight him. After a while, I said, I looked around, thought, what? I found the word of God. Said, I, I, I wrote it in my hand and the devil said, boo. And I said, boo back. And said, when I said boo back, every time I said boo, he got smaller and I got bigger. That's it. You've got to fight him sooner or later. You know, the people don't believe there's a devil. I run into him all the time. Uh huh. Head to him every single day. And any of the believers, any of the believer runs into the devil, whether you realize it or not, that cloud of doubt that tries to settle in over you is not you. It's a demon spirit trying to influence you. You've got to recognize that's not the Lord talking. That's the devil talking to you. And Brother Branham says, you, what do you got to do? You've got to fight him. And he says, I, I realize, he says, sooner or later. And he says, as a believer, you've got to fight him sooner or later. So you might as well start right now. There's only one thing he's afraid of. And it's that blood and that word. And faith lo lays hold and it's strong and it marches on. I say today, it's the blood that protects. It's the blood that defends. When the devil comes knocking on your door, plead the blood of Jesus and say, my God was crucified for me. He was, he he, he rose, not just didn't he to just die for me, he rose for my freedom. And I'm free tonight in Jesus. And I'm not gonna confess the lies of the devil. How many here tonight would stand to your feet and say, I'm standing for the word of God. I'm gonna raise my hand up and say, boo devil. You come to me, boo devil. Got a problem here tonight? Attacking your family, attacking your home? Say, here's what faith says, boo devil. I'm not gonna back up, I'm not gonna bow down, I'm not gonna be a coward because I'm a soldier in the army of God. I'm a warrior and I've got battles to face and I'm not gonna spend my time running from the enemy that's coming after me. You know what I'm gonna do tonight? How many can raise a hand and say, I'm choosing to fight? 
Hallelujah. Hands up everywhere. Say, I'm choosing to fight the devil. I'm not going to accept his lies. I'm not going to let him rearrange. I'm not going to let him redefine what he's told me. If God's given you a promise, I say tonight, hold on to the promise of the word of God. I say tonight, lay hold on eternal life. That's why the Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it. They take it by force. How am I going to get that promise of God to come to pass in my life, Brother Matt? I promise you we're never going to do it by confessing what the, what the devil says. We're never going to do it by confessing our symptoms. We're going to do it one way by saying, I choose to let my confession be what the word of God says until my body obeys my confession. Oh, raise your hands up with me together. Say, Lord, I'm going to choose to confess your word. Amen. I'm going to choose to stop confessing what the, what, what the devil says. And I'm going to confess what the word of God has already said. I'm free in Jesus. I'm healed in Jesus' name. I'm delivered in Jesus' name. I'm not going to allow that thought to come in my mind. Oh, bow your heads with me and raise those hands and say, Lord, I'm not going to allow it anymore from this night forward. I'm not going to claim my anxiety. I'm not going to claim my depression. I'm not going to claim my diabetes. I'm not going to claim all my problems and all the hindrances and obstacles. I'm going to take the sword of the word of God with a strong, and you say, Brother Matt, Lord, I don't have a strong hand. Then say, God, give me that strong hand of faith to take the sword of the word of God and cut the devil's head off. It's inside of you. It's inside of that seed. It's inside of the potential that was in the life of Christ. And all that Christ was, he poured it into his church. And it's inside of the seed of God here tonight. All you got to do is believe it. Oh, I raise my hand up with these people tonight, Lord. And I say, I believe your word, oh God. I confess your word, Lord. I say what the word says. And if the word says I'm free, then I am free in Jesus if the word says I'm healed by his stripes, then I say I'm healed in Jesus' name. It doesn't matter what my symptoms say. I'm not going to use my tongue to allow the devil to get bigger in my life. When he says boo, I'm going to say boo back, devil. I'm going to say Jesus defeated you already at Calvary. And you're just a defeated enemy. The only weapon you've got is trying to get me to doubt my weapon. But I'm going to confess my weapon, which is a sword of the word. You come against my family, Satan, I'm going to be standing here with the word of God to confront you. You come to my children, you can't have my son. I don't care how dark it looks. You can't have my daughter. I don't care what the circumstances look like. You can't have my uncle. You can't have my mother. You can't have my father. I don't care what it looks like. You can't have my baby. You can't have my health. You can't have my body. You can't have my home. Well, God, what God says, that's what's true. What you say is a lie. And I say like Moses, I'm not leaving without my children. I'm not leaving without all of my promises. I'm not leaving with everything God has promised to me. I'm not going to be a coward if Satan's tried to make me a coward and, 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 and try to water down my confession. Then tonight I'm going to take a bold stand for the word of God. I'm going to confess what the word says. Oh, how many can do it? How many can do it here tonight, Lord? Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that we have your word. And as your prophet said, that word will defeat the devil anytime, any place, anywhere, under any condition, under any circumstance, in any atmosphere, in any report. It doesn't matter. The word of God will defeat the devil anywhere, any, any place, anytime. Oh, you've been given the word, little bride. You've been given the sword of the word to cut the devil's head off. You've been given authority and power over any spirit that tries to rise up against you. I say today, don't, don't settle. Don't settle. Don't let the devil sell you a lie and settle down where you're at. There's more ground to gain. There's more land to conquer. There's more promises for you yet. It's not over for you. It's just the beginning. I take a hold of that tonight. How many can take a hold of that and say it's not over? It's just the beginning Little as much when God is in it. Doesn't matter what the circumstances look like. 
I'm going to confess the word of God tonight. What are you playing? Go ahead, Brother Ken. Conquerors, oh, overcomers. Oh, can we raise our hands? Sing it one time through. We've been made, oh, victoria. Hallelujah. Here's how. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Could you gather now? We're going to take a prayer. We've been made more than conquerors. No overcomers in this life. Christ. For my grandmother, just keep playing that. Who's not here tonight? She called me before service to let me know she wouldn't be here. And uh, she just wanted to say she's been having really bad back problems uh, for a week now. And yesterday, uh, Katie took her to the, to the doctor because it's been getting a lot worse. And he's given her a shot, but the shot hasn't really taken full effect yet. So we want to just be remembering my grandmother, Sister Jean, amen, who's streaming here tonight. We're going to pray for her. You believe the prayer of faith can heal the sick, amen, it can touch the body. Uh, prayer also for her sister, Jewel. Uh, she's sick and having some med a medical test ran. We want to remember, amen, <clears throat> my great aunt Jewel. Sister Sharon Short uh, writes in, please pray for my cat for healing and his body from organ failure. God loves the beast. It's what David said. God loves the animals. We've watched God heal animals over and over. We can believe for Sister Sharon's cat. Also, Sister Elizabeth Johnson, prayer request for our Christina. She had a seizure early this morning in her sleep. Brother Winston and I are standing on God's word. Amen. No weapon formed against her shall prosper. That's confessing what the word says. By his stripes she is healed. We ask that the saints stand. How many saints we got here? They're watching. They're online. Say, I'm, I'm going to stand with you, Sister Elizabeth, tonight. How many saints? We were asking that the saints stand with us. She has a headache and she's nauseous now. We're going to pray for her. Lord Jesus, we believe your word. We're believers in it. We raise our hands, God, in a sign of surrender of everything, Lord, that we think, everything the devil tries to lie to us. And we say tonight, Lord God, your word is true and the devil's word's a lie. God, we confess your word for my grandmother's healing in her back, God. I pray even now, Father, may you touch her, Lord Jesus. We pray and we bind our faith together for her body, Lord God. She's elderly. And Lord, these kind of things Satan would try to bring upon her to bring torment in her life. But tonight, healing is for my grandmother, and I confess it. I speak it in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, for, for Jewel, my aunt, great aunt Jewel, who's sick having some tests, Lord, you're the great physician. Lord, you have the answer before the doctor has the answer. God, I pray, Lord, even right now, may you go to my great aunt Jewel, Lord Jesus, and bring healing in your wings for her. Bring answers, Lord God, to these symptoms that she's having. We ask it, Lord, as a church for this little cat, Lord, for from Sister Sharon. I pray, oh God, you can do the impossible. Lord, your prophet has watched, had a little fish that was dead, completely dead, and, and gave it back its life. And Lord, you told him the reason why is to show that you care about the little things. You care about the small things. Lord, and this isn't no small thing to my sister. I pray, God, you'd heal this little cat. Father, for Christina, Sister Elizabeth Johnson, Brother Winston's daughter. God, we believe in Jesus. We believe that you're still the same Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Satan, you've came against and brought an attack on this little sister. But tonight, we confess the blood. We plead the blood of Jesus. By his stripes, Christina is healed. In Jesus' name, we ask for a miracle. Lord, a miraculous touch as we bind together by faith. Whatsoever you ask in faith, it shall be done. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And we, Lord, tonight we bind this evil spirit. Lord, for all the hands that are up tonight, tonight, Lord, for an unspoken request, maybe someone who didn't get a time to write it down. Lord, may you come and be Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Be Jehovah Rapha, our healer, Lord. Bring healing in your wings, Lord, to every situation we ask it. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we, we pray. Hallelujah. You love the Lord tonight? We've been a little bit long, um, so we'll be a little shorter on Sunday, maybe. See? <laughs> any testimonies? Will there be any tonight? We can just take one or two. Uh, give you just a chance. Any testimony? Somebody want to share something the Lord did for you? Amen this week. Nobody? That's all right. We've been made. Let's raise our hands. Sing it. Sing it like a real believer now. Overcomers. Overcomers in, in this life. Yes, Lord. We've been made victorious through the blood, through the blood. Oh, one more time. We've been made more more than than conquerors. Overcomers in this. I'm an overcomer, Lord Jesus. By your word, I've been made victorious. victorious.
still alive.